spawn camp here. In this video, we'll be setting up sprites for our enemy and a basic eight directional system to go along with it. In the scene, we'll only be working with the player and the enemy, and we can start by getting them set on the same X plane. For the enemy, he'll be setting at 0, 1, and 3 on the XYZ with 180 degree rotation. And the player will be 0, 1, and negative 3 with no rotation. We basically want them to be facing directly across from each other. It'll help us out later. Next, our player has a character controller, which is also doubling as our collider. So on the player model, we'll remove the capsule collider because we only need one collider on this guy. For the enemy, we can completely get rid of the enemy model game object. But now we need to find our enemy awareness script because I had a material change on it depending on the aggro status. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. But for me, in the script, I'll get rid of the reference to the material and the logic for changing it. And now in the project, I can completely do away with the two prototype materials I made for it. Lastly, before we start, I want to disable all the enemy scripts so they don't get in the way when we're setting up our sprite system. And also disable the nav mesh agent for good measure. We'll start by setting up the sprite. We want to create a new empty child of enemy and name it enemy sprite. We'll add a sprite renderer. Now we'll create a place for our enemy sprite sheet or individual sprites. Open this folder and we can drag our sprite sheet straight in. On the import settings, change texture type to 2D and UI. For a single sprite, you click apply and you're finished. For us, we want to use the sprite editor. To do that, we will need to select multiple in the sprite mode and click sprite editor. It'll tell us first to apply and now it needs a 2D package. We can go to Window, Package Manager, and then the Unity Registry will track down 2D sprites and install. Now we can go into the Sprite Editor. Click Slice in the top left and Automatic should be fine for us. Hit Slice. After we know it looks good, we can click Apply in the top right. Now we can use all these individual sprites. For now, we'll just drag one in the sprite slot of our sprite renderer to set it up. First, we notice it looks too small. We could scale it, but instead, back in the import settings, we can change this pixels per unit to something lower, like 25. Now you'll notice it's too blurry. So we can change our filter mode to none to get that pixel look we're after. So now we have a sprite, but it's looking kind of flat. Now let's get it to follow our player around. In the enemy script folder, we can create a new C sharp script called enemy sprite look. And add it to the sprite because we only want to turn the graphic. Open it up, and inside we want to get our player's transform. We'll make it private and call it target. In the start, we want to assign the target by using bind object of type, player move, and using dot transform. Then in the update, we can just use transform dot look at and our target. This works, but we don't want our sprites to look up and down, more like this. So back in the script, we may want this functionality. So we'll create a bool called can look vertically. And in the update, we'll say if can look vertically, well, do what we just did. Else we want our sprite to stand upright. So to do that, we'll declare a new vector three and assign it to target position. Next, we want to change the Y coordinate. We'll set that to the enemy's own Y coordinate instead. So modified target.y equals transform.position.y rather than target.position.y. And this will keep our sprite looking straight. And then we'll say transform.lookat 
but with our modified target. Now we have two methods of aligning the sprite. Now let's talk angles. We have our player and enemy in their positions. We can subtract these to get the direction from enemy to our player. With that and our enemy's forward direction, we can use vector3.signed angle to get an angle. Now if we have a list of sprites, we can use the angle to assign the sprite. And since signed angle gives us 180 on one side and negative 180 on the other, if we have a negative angle, we can use the same sprite from the opposite side but flip it instead. So first, let's create a new c -sharp script called Align to Player. We'll put this on our enemy root object this time. We want to get angles from our enemy's actual position and not its sprite's position. In the class, we'll use a private transform named Player. A private vector 3 called target position. A private vector 3 called target direction. And for now, a public float called angle, so we can see what we're doing. In the start method, we'll find our player once more with find object of type. And player move with a dot transform. First, we'll get the position and direction just like we did the sprite. We'll look toward our own Y coordinate, so target position equals, and we'll do it a little different this time with a new vector 3, and we'll construct it with player.position.x, transform.position.y, and player.position.z. Next, we'll get the direction by subtracting target position and our transform.position. Finally, we'll say angle equals vector 3.signed angle. And target direction is our from. Transform.forward is our to. And the axis will be vector 3.up. Now we need to visualize this, so we'll add a void on gizmo selected. And first we'll use color green with gizmos.color. And we want to draw a ray. And this is just from our position straight forward. Then we'll change the color and we want to draw a line from our position to our target position. And with that set up, we can see the angle is calculating. And you can see we have positive angles up to 180 on one side and from 0 to negative 180 on the other. See, we could use math. We know that we got 360 degrees in 8 directions, so we got spans of 45 degrees. But with signed angle, we got 0 in the middle, and our main two directions would be split, and so on and so on. So instead, I chose to do it visually. In any graphics editor, you can throw together a template with numbers 0 through 7, making 8 total sections. You can grab this image from the description or follow along just to get the angles. After importing, set it to sprite and drag it right on the enemy root game object. Center it up. Just make sure that zero is facing forward. And I went with the numbers going clockwise. Just rotate it and scale it until it's nice and readable. When in orthographic mode with the enemy selected, we have a simple way to get these angles that we need. Now let's go back in the angle script. Below angle, we want a public int last index. And this will store the 0 through 7. At the bottom of the update, after we get the angle, we want to convert it to our index. So we'll say last index equals. Now outside the update, we'll say private int called get index. And this will take in a float called angle and give us an int back. For now, we'll return last index. And back up here, we can say equals get index. And we'll pass in the angle that we just calculated. Now, in get index, we'll add some logic. We'll start with front and back. In Unity, we'll select our enemy and hit play. 
We'll use the template to get the edges of each index. We have 22.5 to negative 22.5 for a zero, negative 67.5, and it goes to negative 112.5, negative 157.5 to positive 157.5. And then back around, they're all the same as the other side, but positive. Back in the script, we can pull out these values and write some functional if statements. So for the front, we can say if it's greater than negative 22.5 and less than 22.6, then we can return 0. And for backwards, we can say if the angle is less than or equal to negative 157.5 or it's greater than or equal to 157.5, then return 4. Now we can work our way around from the front. So if our angle is greater than or equal to 22.5, and our angle is less than 67.5, return 7. We can copy and paste this statement, and next we'll say if it's greater than or equal to 67.5 and it's less than 112.5, return 6. If less than or equal to 112.5 and less than 157.5, return 5. For the back, we can paste again. It's greater than or equal to negative 157.4 and less than negative 112.5, then return 3. And then if it's negative 112.5 and negative 67.5, then return 2. And to loop back around, we'll say if angle is greater than or equal to negative 67.5 and our angle less than or equal to negative 22.5 we return 1. This probably isn't perfect but if anything gets missed it'll return whatever it was last and you won't be able to tell. After checking I'll delete the template and go back into our angle script. Just temporarily let's test with some sprites. We need a public sprite renderer. I'll name sprite renderer and a public array of sprites I'll call sprites. Now we can save and unity drag these in. We'll grab the sprite renderer off the child game object. And for the sprites, we'll grab these in order. The first one will be looking forward, and then angled forward, and then side, and then angled backwards, and then backwards. And since we only have one direction, we'll loop back around. We'll use code to flip these around when we need to. You end up having eight sprites, zero to four, and then back to one. Back in the code, after we get the index, we can set our sprite renderer sprite to the sprite array at our index. We'll just say sprite renderer dot sprite equals sprites. And inside we'll pass in last index. Now we have a sprite renderer and it's shuffling through eight sprites. But half of them are the same sprite. So let's flip half of them. So we'll use a vector 3 called temporary scale. And at first we'll set it to 1 across the x, y, and z. Then it may be different for you, but for me, if our angle is greater than zero, then I want to flip it, but on the x-axis. So we'll say temporary scale dot x times equal negative 1f. And then after the if check, we'll set sprite renderer dot transform dot local scale to equal our temporary scale. And now if you have a static image, you're done. We have rotations and we have a script assigning a corresponding index. But for this video, we're going to add in some animations. First, let's do away with where we set the sprite. We'll remove the sprite array. We'll keep our sprite renderer, but instead make it private. 
and also make our angle private since we don't need to see it anymore. In the start method, we're going to assign our sprite renderer with sprite renderer equals, and we're going to use get component in children sprite renderer to grab it off of our game object. And now we go into Unity and set up our animator. In our animator folder, we'll create a new animator named imp anim. Then we'll drag this right on our enemy sprite. Now we'll be calling our animator from our enemy script. So we'll need a private reference to our animator. I'll call sprite anim. And a private reference to our angle to player script. I'll call angle to player. In the start, we'll set up these references. For the sprite anim, it's on the child of the enemy game object, so we'll be using get component in children. And we're looking for our animator. And for the angle to player, it's on our game object, so we'll just use get component. And while we're in the start method, we're going to make our enemy manager private and assign it in the start with find object of type. Now, if we were to prefab our enemy and instantiate it, we won't get a null reference error. Now in our project, we'll undock our animation window because we need access to our sprites. And with the enemy sprite selected in our hierarchy, we'll create a new animation and we'll give this first one the name of Imp Idle Zero. So now we'll hold shift and grab all of our front facing sprites. And drag them right in the animator. As it is, our last sprite will only show for a split second and then loop back to the first one. So we'll duplicate this last sprite by clicking off and then clicking the keyframe. And we'll just control C to copy, move the scrubber one frame over, and control P to paste. Now we'll select all of them again and we'll stretch it out to one and a half seconds should be fine. Now we'll create a new animation for our second index which we're going to call imp idle one and repeat with the forward angle facing sprites and rinse and repeat until you have one animation clip for each index that you have. Since I personally only have five sprites, we'll let our flipping code handle the rest and then we'll reuse them for both sides. To stay organized, we'll put our animation clips in our animation folder and turn our attention to our animator window. It should automatically put one state for each clip that we made, but we'll only need one for each animation state, so we'll delete all but the default one, and we'll right click and create a new blend tree in state. This created a new parameter called blend. This is what we'll use later to control which animation of our multiple idle animations is playing. So now give it a different name, I'll just call it Imp Idle. Now double click and enter our state and we'll see our blend tree. First, let's rename our parameter to something like Sprite Rotation. And right now it's returning 0 to 1, but we'll fix that in a minute. Right click and add a motion. Over in the inspector, we'll assign this first motion with our forward facing animation, or our Imp Idle 0. Next, we'll add a new one for our second, so we'll use imp idle 1. Now, it'll automatically assign thresholds. So we're going to untick this box, and it should work how we need. If not, we can just manually assign these 0 through 7. Next, add imp idle 2. And so on, and so on. I noticed I missed making animation 3, so hang on a second. So 
So when we get to idle 4, or our backward spacing sprite, we'll want to reuse our animations that we already have. So going back up the list, we can go imp idle 3, imp idle 2, and lastly imp idle 1. And since we changed our thresholds, you can see now that our slider goes from 0 to 7. Finally, let's set this up. So in our enemy script, we want to, at the top of our update, set a parameter in our animator. So sprite anim.setfloat. And we'll pass in what we named it, so sprite rotation. And then we'll pass in our angle to player dot last index. And since the index updates first, we can call any animation state that we want afterwards and it'll have the correct index. So in our project, let's just enable our enemy scripts and we have a pretty simple eight directional sprite set up. And since our enemy is no longer relying on a public variable to assign our game manager, we can go ahead and put our enemy in the center of our scene and put it in our prefab folder. So that's it. I hope this was helpful and please like and subscribe. Until next time, SpawnCap out.